All right, welcome or welcome back to the Alpha Mega Biz Dev Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. John Lee. And today we're going to get into a topic that is really honestly a, a very, very popular topic nowadays in chiropractic and just really in, in the, the healing world. Uh, whether you're a, a doctor of chiropractic, physical therapy, podiatrist, medical doctor, um, and it's about shockwave and laser. And so um, we're going to talk about shockwave and laser and healing at the speed of sound and light. So I have a feeling that more than just healthcare providers are going to probably tune into this episode because it is such a hot topic. And I know the general public is wanting to learn more and more about shockwave and laser and its benefits and, and how it's used. So I think this is going to be insightful to a, a lot of people out there. So I'm excited to have a special guest, um, Dr. Mark Callanan from Chattanooga, and he is the Director of Medical Education um, in the U.S. for, for Chattanooga, which is um, a huge company from uh, what I hear. Uh, I think Enovis, the parent company, you guys are like a multi-billion dollar company, right, Mark? Yeah, we're publicly traded. We're, uh, you know, multiple divisions. So there's a surgical component uh, for implants and things of that nature. We have Don Joy Bracing, which is the number one bracing company in the world uh, as a separate division. And then Chattanooga is kind of the rehab uh, moniker. And underneath that is Light Force Therapy Lasers, which I was part of their team uh, since 2017. And when we were acquired in 2020 by Inovis, um, I came along for that trip. So I'm happy to be here. But uh, since that time, I've been um, diving into the shockwave technology as well as well as lasers. So I'm um, looking forward to a fun conversation today. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, Mark, you and I go years back. Yeah. As soon as you came on board with Chattanooga uh, and they let us know, you know, um, you know, customers of Chattanooga products um, that you were the new clinic resource, you know, I, I didn't hesitate. I started emailing you with questions about um, the decompression tables, the, the Triton DTS tables, whenever, certain situations would come come across and I didn't really know the answer. I'd email you. You'd always have the answers and reply very promptly and with, with good advice. Um, also did that with the uh, light force laser that we have. Uh, we have the EXPI 25 watt. We've had that for years and uh, went to you with questions about that. And then more so in the last couple of years with uh, shockwave questions. So thank you uh, just from, you know, just from a, uh, customer standpoint, thanks for being a great <laughs> clinical resource. You have really been a big help when I have those kind of weird, tough situations like, mm, I'm not sure how I should go about using the modality on this situation with this patient. And you will usually come back with an answer or or resources. So I, I really appreciate that. Um, yeah. I know a lot of um, our, our clients at Alpha Med Consulting also have had similar good experiences with uh, using you as a clinical resource. And also um, uh, Dr. Mark was um, a guest speaker at our seminar back in March in California, spoke on um, a lot of that, the things that we're going to talk about now. So Dr. Mark truly is an expert. Um, and, and just to be very transparent about that seminar, we actually had a, a tech issue that day. And just <laughs> right when his presentation went on, um, our laptop and uh, projector just stopped communicating and we could not get his PowerPoint up. But because he knows this information like the back of his hand, he just spoke just, you know, just from, just from uh, memory. And uh, it was quite amazing, just the information that he shared. So anyways, really excited. We're lucky, lucky to have your expertise on this uh, conversation here. Yeah, so, I think you bring up a really good point, John. It's just, you know, there's lots of different manufacturers out there and different products that you can choose from. But I think when you're doing your research, or you're looking for a company you want to, you know, deal with, it's important to be with someone, A, who's trusted and been around for a while, you know, Chattanooga has been around for over 75 years now. Um, so when you're making a large capital investment, you know, it obviously makes everybody bite their nails a little bit. Um, not only just having a trusted name for service and if there's a repair need or what have you, that's important, but from the technical side, which is where I live, um, you know, I have a lot of fun getting to know guys, you know, like, like John and, uh, helping them out and helping patients. So you will come across situations where you're going to have questions or wonder, Hey, can I use this for that or this? And it is nice when you can pick up the phone or send an email, um, and get a response to help you with that, just to make sure that, you know, your patient care, uh, is optimal and you're getting the most out of that device. Yes. And, and that's a big reason why I've always stuck with Chattanooga because, you know, Chattanooga is a name that's been in the chiropractic you know, supplier industry for a long, long time. I mean, going back to when I first set up my office in 2017, 
you know, we got three of the, I think it was like a e stems ultrasound combo unit. And so we got three of those to sit in our therapy uh, part of our office. So that was my first experience um, with Chattanooga and Chattanooga's uh, tech support and clinical support is, I, I think, unmatched. So when you have such a big company like this, um, you're always going to have access to resources that you need, which you don't always get with some of the you know, smaller companies. So a uh, big advantage of working with Chattanooga. And then when you guys, and then when we decided to get into decompression about six years ago, you know, uh, I've heard about, about the Chattanooga decompression tables for a long, long time. A lot of my peers had already been using you guys for years. And so uh, it's been a great addition to our office. And then when you guys bought out uh, Light Force Lasers, uh, you know, we had bought, bought the Light Force Laser even before the buyout. And so when Chattanooga took over, then I, was pretty excited because I realized, wow, Light Force is going to have even better support because of just all the backing they have. So anyway, it's just a solid company through and through. Um, but let, let's get into, you know, giving the audience what, what they came here for, which is shockwave and laser. So we added a laser to our office about five, six years ago, right about when we added decompression. And it's the class four, you know, high energy laser. And it's been an awesome part of our service offerings. And we added... Shockwave focused about two years ago, and we just added a radio pulse shockwave machine recently as well. So, you know, we've got all these different offerings, um, but more and more lately, honestly, this year, so many doctors are coming to me and asking me and talking to me about shockwave and laser. It is a very, very popular hot topic. So we just want to take the time to really share with other doctors and even just the public just give you some insight and education on, on what the heck is shockwave and laser, right? You might know something about it. You have, might not have, have no idea. You might have received some of this as a, as a patient. But what I'll start off with saying is that uh, just from using these in my office, quite revolutionary, I, I got to say, you know, and especially when you come from the world of chiropractic, because chiropractors tend to have this really, you know, hardcore philosophy which is, hey, we just have to adjust the spine, move the bones, get the subluxations correct, to get the pressure of the nervous system. And, and yes, neck pain, back pain, things like that will go away, but we can also restore nervous system communication and things like digestive issues, sinus issues, allergies, um, even fertility, things like that. I mean, we, I've seen a lot of that stuff improve in my career, and uh, there's there's tons of truth to, to all that and power just from carpet adjustment. So we have this huge debate, which we'll probably have to do another episode on this in chiropractic, which is straights versus mixers, right? Straights are known as, hey, I'm just going to do adjustments and that's all the, the body needs, right? And that's all we should ever do is just provide the adjustment and restore the spine's alignment and restore the nervous system. And, and yes, th there's a lot of value to that. But I think when you add amazing technology and modalities that can get your patients better faster and even more effectively, and you can add to the almighty, powerful hands-on manual adjustment with decompression, shockwave, laser, now you're really, really doing something for your patients. You know, just serving your fellow human uh, with all those amazing offerings. Um, and, and we've seen it for now for the last five, six years of having all these combinations our patients are getting better faster and more effectively. And we're really, we're really excited about that. Right. So is, is that kind of similar to what you've been seeing um, over the years on your end, Mark? Yeah, I, I think, you know, as, as any manual therapist, I, I was, I'm a physical therapist by training and I was a manual therapist. I used very few modalities when I was treating patients. I didn't know anything about lasers or you know, shockwave. It wasn't really um, available when I was, was treating. So um, that being said, I got pretty skilled with doing all the, a lot of the manual things that we all do in order to get joints moving and soft tissue moving. But from that perspective, we know that one of the most challenging things is to get guarded muscles, things that are painful to relax so that you can then create the manipulative or mobilization type techniques you need to get to the joint or the source. If there's something that's not moving properly, um, and the, the great thing about these devices, the laser and the shockwave, is they both have the ability within minutes to bring a lot of that down. So they can bring pain down, they can bring muscle guarding down, so that you can then be much freer to do the manual work you need to do. And it happens a lot easier, probably save time, you know, on that on that visit um, to get to where you need to get. 
Uh, you can have an assistant do that type of setup for the for the patient when you can come in and do your expert, you know, mobilization manipulation techniques. It just makes your life a lot easier. And the patients love it because it feels good. Uh, well, the shockwave, it feels good eventually. <laughs> Initially, it's a little uncomfortable, but they usually like the end result when they're done after the treatment because they will be freer and have less pain. Um, but it just helps create that. Uh, it's it's a non-invasive, non-pharmacological way, which is a big part of the chiropractic messaging um, to help patients, right? You know, you have your supplements and different things that you're going to counsel on nutrition and such. This fits that narrative really well. Hey, it's not a pill. It's not a needle. It's not injectable. It's something that is very natural, sound or light, you know, depending on which way you're going to go, um, but can have profound effects on, on the body and, and getting that person moving in the right direction and feeling better when they walk out that same day. Yeah, ultimately, it's still natural healing. Yes, we're using tech to get the healing process initiated, but then the body is really taking over and doing all the miraculous, magical healing of the body. So let's start with uh, shockwave. You know, this is sound. This is sound therapy kit. So kind of, I guess, in layman's terms, right? Say we don't we don't have a, a doctor who's listening, but it's the general public audience. Like, how would you explain what shockwave therapy is? Yeah, it's, it's a high intensity sound wave. So like when you see lightning and thunder, you know, that's an example of uh, a shock wave. Or if you hear the sound barrier get broken when a jet goes you know, over Mach 1, those are examples of shock waves. So they happen very quickly. They have a very sharp pressure peak and then a very quick negative tensile uh, force that happens. And that, that, that unique combination of high peak pressure with a very fast negative pressure uh, is what helps it do its magic in tissue. Um, that ten the tensile portion is is associated with cavitation or making little bubbles essentially uh, in the tissue. And you might you might be saying, well, so what? But what that does is it it basically it challenges cells. So it makes them either adapt to that energy that it's been applied to, or if it can't handle it, the membranes aren't aren't healthy, it will cause the cell to go into apoptosis and then create the body's ability to start over the healing process. So hey, it's sort of like thinning the herd on uh, on bad cells. So it's it's really important when you have like chronic tendinopathy or chronic soft tissue problems. Um, you can use these devices on this tissue, and it's sort of it's like a, it's literally like a pressure check. It's going to say, hey, is this tissue healthy enough to be stimulated to move on and, and be healthier, or is it so unhealthy that it can't handle this type of energy, and therefore it's going to help move it along into getting replaced with new collagen and new cells. So. Um, it, it does things, uh, in a, in a way that our hands can't do as efficiently or at the same depth. So, um, and, and it, it's, it's still a sound wave. And, and sometimes that gets confusing for people when they think, oh, like John was mentioning about the, the therapeutic ultrasound you might have in your clinic, you know, that's next to an Easton tower, just understand that's a sound wave. So it's similar to a shock wave because of that. But it's a much higher, the, the, the therapeutic ultrasounds are much higher frequency in their heating modalities. So they, they're, they create friction of water molecules. Um, that's what allows it to create deep heat uh, if it's in a non-pulsed setting. But for the shock waves, the, the frequency is much slower. So that it's not a thermal agent, but the intensity is significantly higher. So think of it as it's a, it's a much harder punch, you know, from the sound wave that's happening to the cell uh, than what your therapeutic ultrasound can create. So, yeah, so you said, you know, faster than like a Mach 1, that would be like a sonic boom, right? If people kind of are familiar with that, hearing that, at, you know, airplane jet shows. Uh, and I Googled that once when I was learning about shockwave and it's like 700 plus miles per hour. So that invisible sound wave is, is coming out of the applicator extremely fast, extremely powerfully. And then that's initiating something very positive to happen. So, mm -hmm. all right. Um, so then laser, what is laser in simple terms? So laser's just a special kind of light. So it's a, it's a single, usually a single wavelength that comes out of the diodes, but there can be multiple diodes. So some machines have a couple different wavelengths, but the nature of it, it's, 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 uh, it's a single wavelength and it's very focused. It's linear. Um, the beam can be adjusted to basically divert slightly, which is the case in therapy lasers, but like for like a laser scope on a rifle, the divergent beam is at zero degrees. So that those can basically put a pinpoint on something that's five feet away or a hundred feet away. Um, it's the nature of that, of that device, the way that they sort of channel or, or angle that light. But 
what they found is that when you put certain wavelengths in for therapy lasers, it's in the near infrared spectrum, which is just above the visible spectrum. So they're invisible to the eye. When you they do really well at getting past your skin and getting past melanin. And by doing so, they can go in and excite cells below the surface of the skin. They can also do things on the skin for wounds and things of that nature. Um, but the, the devices that Light Force, you know, are about are designed to try to get to tissues like tendons, muscles, nerves, things of those that nature that's several centimeters below the surface of the skin. So when that light hits the mitochondria of cells, it increases metabolism. So it's like an accelerator to a uh, tissue repair process. Um, and it can, it has a whole bunch of different effects on the inflammatory cascade, which impacts, you know, nitric oxide for, as an example, it helps create vasodilation. So you get better blood flow, better oxygenation of the tissue, which we know is important. Um, but it also has a really interesting impact, these higher power devices, uh, on pain, because it's going to hit a nerve. And if you hit, they've shown, if you hit nerves with enough light, enough intensity of light, it can actually slow down the conduction velocity of those afferents going back to the cord, which means you put this on the patient and then within a minute or two, they're gonna say, hey, my pain just went from a six to a three, um, what just happened? It, so it has this really great ability to, to basically impact pain quickly. Um, and it's, it's a differentiator between the, the lower, the cold lasers that maybe some of you have used or are familiar with, because um, I get asked that question a lot, hey, so your device is a cold laser. Technically it's not because the intensity of the light's higher, it's over a half a watt of power. Um, and what that means is that when you put it on the skin, if you were to just leave it static, like you would a class three device, it would actually get too warm on the, on the skin. So you, you, those devices, the class fours, if you're ever wondering, is this device a, a low power cold laser or a class four device, just put it on your palm, your hand for a few seconds. And if it starts getting warm, then you know that you're dealing with a, a class four device. Yes. And so that's a very important, um, point to state because, um, even with doctors who have the class four, I mean, they're still talking about, hey, this is a low level laser. It's, it's not. And once you have a class four, it's, it's not a low level. It's it's a high energy output laser. Um, and like the one that we have is 25 watts. I think now you guys have ones that are 40 watts plus. Mm -hmm. So it's um, a very, very powerful, fast delivery of uh, light dosage to the area. And what Mark is saying uh, is that, you know, if I, I explain to patients like this, like they say, what, what the heck is laser? Like, is it just the heat? And I, I tell them, no, it's not, not really the heat that is making things better. It's, it's the, the real light energy that is absorbed into the tissue, into the cells. And then it, and I'll ask him, have you, um, or do you remember high school biology learning about cells and mitochondria and ATP production? And they'll say, yeah, kind of. And I'll tell them, you know, ATP is energy. And so if the laser hits a certain area, it's, asking the cells to produce a lot more ATP than an abundance of energy around the area. And uh, now that area is going to heal a lot faster process, healing um, normal inflammation. That's a, a part of the healing process a lot faster. So it speeds up the whole process of healing. Yeah. I mean, the, it, it's interesting because the heat part, you know, it's usually, it can be confusing because people think, oh, it's just a heating modality. So, I mean, when you look at the FDA clearance, it's technically sort of classified as that, but it does a lot more like John's pointing out. But the nice thing about the, the warming effect on the surface of the skin, A, as we know, heat helps with pain, you know, and helps muscles relax. So it's a good thing on that front. But it lets the patient know something's happening. You know, with the, with the cold lasers, that you put that on somebody's skin for, you know, 30 seconds or 60 seconds, and you're going to move it to the next spot, which is how those are normally applied. There's no sensation. So the patient is kind of, you know, looking at you sideways, is this doing anything? And, and if you dose it properly, it will. Um, it's not going to change pain as quickly as these class four devices. But what's nice is when the patient can feel that warmth on their skin, they know something's going on, right? You know, they, they don't have to know, oh, it's happening centimeters below the surface of the skin. They just know, hey, I feel that and, and that's helping. So uh, it takes away a little bit of that having to explain you know, something that's not sensical, uh, like, like microcurrent, for example, you know, if somebody was using that, they're not feeling anything, like, is this doing anything? Um, those are always kind of, you know, challenging conversations with patients. Don't you think, do you think that John? Correct. Yeah. It, it could be challenging to, to explain it. Um, I even like to use the sunlight and photosynthesis analogy that seems to help mm -hmm. people kind of get it, you know, I'll, I'll say, so, Hey, think about outside on a sunny day, bright suns out there beaming sunlight onto plant life, green, you know, leaves, um, and the plants need to absorb that for photosynthesis for them to metabolize and be healthy. 
Um, and in the summertime, there's more abundant plant life because there's more sunlight. In the winter, less sunlight, less plant photosynthesis, and you know, leaves fall off. And so I'll explain to patients that, hey, laser is is basically providing kind of like sunlight is allowing things to be more abundant and healthy and and, and um, heal and, and do good things. And they usually light bulb goes off and they, oh, okay, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Right. And I, I think that the thing that's important for you to understand the, the clinician out there is like, you know, you can sit out at the beach and get, you know, a ton of sunlight and you're not creating photobiomodulation or this stuff that these lasers do. And the reason why is that the, the wavelength range is very narrow that can impact these cells the way that we're discussing. And there has to be a lot of it. So it, normally our skin is really, really good at reflecting and scattering light, you know, and melanin absorbs it. Um, that's how we get suntans and things of that nature. Um, but when you're talking about getting light past melanin into, into the body, generally you, you can sit out at the beach all day long. You're not going to really have that happen. So um, that's just an important thing to understand uh, with why, why this works is it's very concentrated and there are very specific wavelengths that can um, impact these cells this way. Right. Right. Um, so another way I explain to patients, like if they just kind of want to understand the whole concept, um, I explain to patients that, Hey, think of shockwave therapy is kind of like the demolition crew. Like say you have a kitchen remodel at your house that you want to get done. And you got this old, nasty, broken down, kitchen with ugly cabinets and you know, broken this broken that so you hire the general contractor they come in and they're going to send a demo team to kind of bash it all down break down the cabinets and then now uh, you clear it out then i say the laser is almost like the, the the rebuild crew right it helps everything to rebuild a lot faster so shockwave the demo crew lasers the rebuild crew just much faster so is that okay to explain like that yeah, I think if you if you just were doing shockwave on its own, it will have it spurs on the body to kind of bring the the rebuild crew in. But you can look at it as the laser is kind of like an accelerant, so it would help mm -hmm. it happen faster. So if you just were using shockwave, it's still going to help spur on the repair process. It's just the laser is going to make that process be quicker and be a little bit more efficient. It's, it's like the laser is uh, giving the rebuild guys a bunch of caffeine shots. That's right. That's right. They're all getting their Starbucks before they hit the, hit yeah. the top. <laughs> Triple espresso to work faster that day. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And I tell patients that too. If they say, well, can I just do shock? I say, yeah, you can. Yeah. Because the shock wave is going to trigger and start a whole repair response, you know, tissue regeneration, even without laser, it'll all happen. But if you add laser, now we're shaving probably days and days off of that whole process because now you're combining the two. So it is a pretty powerful one, two combination. I think the the one other thing to point out is that, you know, because shockwave is a sound modality, it has the ability to penetrate really deep. So uh, a radial pressure wave, which is a special kind of energy device, it's slightly different than a focus shockwave. Uh, it can penetrate about six centimeters of depth, but the focus shockwave uh, can almost be twice that. So about 12, 12 and a half centimeters for the Chattanooga device. So just understand your ability to reach depth with these tools are is pretty significant the laser has the ability to get several centimeters of penetration as well but like just from a physics standpoint when you look at photons and light and sound energy um sound is just a much better tool to get to depth and you know if, if you have any questions about that you know I, I give the analogy if you were in a in the navy and you were in a destroyer looking for submarines you'd be pinging at depth with sonar you wouldn't be using a laser um, to be looking for sh for the submarines below you just because of the nature of how how well it can penetrate through water. So um, okay. just keep that in mind. Yeah, and that's why uh, ultrasound gel is used as a medium to allow the sound wave to travel better into the tissue. Yeah, if the sound wave is because of the conductive property of air, if it hits air, it's going to pretty much stop. So it's real, real important that you have good contact with the skin and lots of gel so that that energy is transferred from the, the device into the skin, into the body, for sure. Okay. And treatment time-wise, uh, these don't take very long. We're talking about probably five to seven minutes you know, per treatment, per area. Can we explain now the differences between focus shockwave and radio pulse shockwave? Yeah, so uh, there's inherent differences in the in the nature of the wave itself but the the focus shock wave generally is you know it's a spark that's generated in the handpiece and then there's a concave um, shield or, or piece of metal behind that spark which then it bounces off of and focuses it into the tissue so the chattanooga device has water in the head so that that energy is conducted from in water into a membrane which then goes 
into contact with the skin and it's transferred. There's some devices that are piezoelectric where they have basically crystals that shake and those go directly into the, the skin on the, on the gel into the body. So there's a couple of different ways that the shockwave can be generated, but the research says it doesn't really matter, you know, what type you use. It's more about dosing and making sure that it's the right number of pulses and the right intensity. So the, from a, from a, how to treat, patients with shockwave is pretty straightforward. The radial pressure wave, it's designed, the it's a, usually a pneumatic device. So there's an air compressor that's going to push a metal pellet into the back of a, a transducer of the head. Um, so when it hits that, that energy is then transferred into the tissue. The wave is divergent. So it doesn't come to a point, it kind of goes and spreads out a little bit, um, which is part of the reason why it can't go as deep. But it can easily treat anything, you know, appendicularly uh, that that's, you know, a centimeter, a couple centimeters deep, um, it's going to go to reach it with enough intensity to make change. So when they put this radial pressure wave, even though it's, you know, the, the intensity of it, it, it happens about a thousand times faster with a, with a focus shock wave than a radial pressure wave. And it's got about a hundred times more energy at its peak pressure. So on a, on a focus shock wave versus a radial pressure wave. So the radial pressure wave is slower. It's not as intense. And so some people, when they see that, they go, oh, it must not work as well. But the research doesn't show that at all. It shows that if you get, even with that different wave form, if you get the right intensity uh, and the right number of pulses on the problem, you're going to get very similar uh, results. And, and I would just add the last thing, it's because of the nature of the divergent beam of a radial pressure wave it's very very good and you know john's just starting to get used to playing around with that type of equipment but because of that it's very easy like that same analogy with the destroyer on the surface to find problems because of that wider beam so you can scan a quad you can scan someone's low back and if they have a trigger point or something that's tender it's pretty easy to locate um because that's the thing that's interesting even though it's this sort of noxious stimulus that's going to find problems and they're going to go oh that doesn't feel great when you put it over inert tissue that's not problematic, they're not going to feel anything. So if you took it over your own forearm and moved it around, you're going to hear it tapping away. But you generally won't feel anything unless you got really close to a bone uh, or a nerve, then you're going to feel it. Uh, but that's a different reason. But it's nice because you as a clinician, it's very uh, almost diagnostic in nature. You're going to move it around until you find something that hurts. And then you're going to note, okay, what's that? What's the tissue that's involved? And then you pretty much treat it out. Um, and maybe John, you can say how you use that in your clinic. Cause I know you use that a lot on that first visit, right? Yes. Yeah. So that um, is definitely a therapeutic, but you can use it diagnostically in the beginning. So, mm -hmm. and especially like, you know, as chiropractors or physical therapists, we use our hands and palpation is a big part of us confirming and finding areas where the problems are and, and knowing where and how we're going to do treatment. And when you get, um, the, the shock wave, you know, either form over that area, that patient's response, if they feel it, if they feel some discomfort, then that further confirms, okay, that definitely is where the problems are. And then also in cases that are more difficult, like say, say it's an extremity issue and I'm not feeling it with my hands, I'm not quite sure, but there's been times where I put the shockwave piece over and now the patient feels it and it was deeper where I, I couldn't get to with my hands and fingers. And I know that the, the shockwave can reach that area. And now I know, okay, I can help you with this. Uh, this is going to be a beneficial um, treatment uh, modality for you. And then that patient can undergo treatment with that with that treatment. I think the thing is, is they both have the ability to treat tendons really well. So the, the laser can be used for acute tendinopathy or chronic tendinopathy. The, the shockwave generally works best with more chronic tendinopathies. But if you just think in your clinic about how challenging those are, whether it's a plantar fasciitis type problem, or it's like an anterior knee problem, patellar tendon related, or lateral epicondylitis, you might kind of like cringe, like, oh, brother, this is going to be a really hard thing to move the needle on, because they are, they're really hard to treat. These devices will make you look forward to those patients coming in the door, because they're, they, they're direct, they go right at that tissue, right at the problem. And they'll, they'll, they'll start the, the, the improvement process on day one because that patient will get done. They'll have better range. Usually they'll have less aggravating motions that they, they'll say, Hey, that feels looser, feels better. Um, and you know, with those chronic tendinopathy type patients, those are usually the ones that are the hardest to keep on a plan of care, right? Because normal healing processes, it takes weeks to really move the needle on those folks. And so sometimes people will get disenchanted and they'll just sort of stop coming because they're like, well, I don't think it's really working. And it's not that you're doing anything wrong. It's just that the tissue hasn't had a chance to get there because of the impact on the pain so quickly. 
and the shortening of overall of the plan of care you're going to see with some of these tendency type problems, um, I think you're going to find that it's going to really help with patient compliance. Have you seen that with, with your clinic, John? Oh, m most definitely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, can we get into some of the conditions, the common human ailments that people are getting better with, with uh, the shockwaves? And I, I know Radio Pulse has been around for a long time, more than a decade here in the U.S. Focus has really started to gain popularity in the last couple of years I've seen. Um, so Radio Pulse definitely has more of, I think, the clearances, right? Um, just a lot more research and um, lots of different body parts that's uh, um, capable of, of treating. So can you share some of that? Yeah, so you know the FDA classifies the Chattanooga radio pressure wave two as a class one device. So it's very low risk. They feel you know it's it's a, it's a lower energy output. So because of that, it's got a much broader uh, indications list. So you can use it for pretty much any myofascial problem around the body and be on label with that. And you can market to that. You can state, hey, you can treat you know all sorts of different myofascial uh, complaints, tendinosis and things of that nature. And it makes it very easy to get the word out on that. The Chattanooga Focus Shockwave device is a class three device because of its much higher energy output. So because of that, it's got a much more limited uh, indication statement. And that is for you know plantar fasciitis, heel pain on patients that are 18 years of age or older that have had symptoms for six months. So it's very narrow in, in its description. Um, if you were to treat you know other areas of the body off, off of the foot, it would be considered an off-label application, um, which any professional can do. Uh, but just understand it will impact some of your ability to market that because you can't state, hey, with, with an off-label uh, marketing message, you wouldn't want to say, hey, I can treat a, a shoulder or I can treat a TMJ with it, even though there's research to support that it can do that. You just have to be careful and check with your um, your marketing folks and, <clears throat> you know, from a legality standpoint. But... <clears throat> They can treat, uh, you know, any, any number of soft tissue conditions and the research is there to support them. So um, it, it's been very exciting. I think the last thing I would just point out is that from a price point standpoint, the, the, the focus units generally are anywhere from two to three X on cost. So depending on the manufacturer you're looking at. So from an access standpoint, when you look around the globe at the shockwave market, there's a lot more radio pressure units that are in service and being used because they get good outcomes and they're much cheaper. So um, just understand when you're thinking about which device you want to get, there's some pluses and minus for each. Um, and just understand those variables when you make that decision. Right. And, and Mark brings up a good point. Um, so yeah, we got our hands on a focus shockwave machine first. So I have a lot more experience with it. And um, yeah, you know, we, we can't, um, I guess, say that it, it treats all kinds of different things, but you know, off record, it's I mean, it's quite amazing, quite amazing at, at lots of different things. But the radio pulse is just capable. I tell patients. So, um, common things are elbow tendonitis. So your your classic um, tennis elbow, golfer's, golfer's elbow, uh, wrist issues, uh, even uh, Morton's rum on the feet, plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendonitis, um, jumper's knee, runner's knee, patella tendonitis. Um, we've even had um, knee issues, right? Like men meniscus issues where it, it, it really feels like literally the, the meniscus is building back up. Uh, we've even had a lady who sprained and tore ligaments in her ankle from a really bad sprain. And she had a pre MRI and post MRI post MRI showed regrowth of ligaments. I mean, so it's quite phenomenal, quite miraculous what this uh, shockwave technology is doing as far as healing. Um, so lots of different conditions. And then let's talk about some of the conditions that laser is really good at treating, which is, you're right, a lot of those acute conditions, really hot tendonitis. Can you share some of that? Yeah, so any kind of itis osis uh, is going to be applicable for the laser. So any kind of tendon issue, any kind of neuritis, uh, things that are have inflammation present uh, or painful, you're going to be able to apply it. So, I mean, pretty much from, it's super versatile. So you can use it, you know, from head to toe uh, on a number of things. Um, if something's irritated or in the, in the, you know, acute side, subacute side of the inflammatory process, it's going to help basically move that into the later phases of healing and the proliferative healing and eventually remodeling faster. So um, pretty much everybody that walks in your clinic that has any kind of strain or pain is somewhere in that early phase of healing. So it has a, a place for it. But like we were talking about earlier, its ability to impact pain so quickly is what makes it wonderful. So almost everybody that walks in your clinic has some sort of pain. That's why they're there. 
um, and the fact that it can impact nerves the way that it does to change that subjective quickly. And, and usually the impact, it, it's a little complicated when you look at the different mechanisms because there are a handful of things that are going on when you talk about pain because um, there's things that are more lasting as far as, you know, when blood flow improves and beta endorphins are brought in and bradykinins are lowered, different things that are like chemically part of the more chronic nature of pain. It addresses that stuff. In addition to this uh, acute change that happens within minutes after you treat with high power. So when, you know, you're, you're thinking through about how it's helping your patient, just understand there's mechanisms that will last maybe like 10 to 14 hours on that, the afferent side of it, but then you're going to get these lasting benefits that happen because of those changes in blood flow and the ATP production, the tissue that's trying to mend better fibroblastic activity, better collagen lay down, all that stuff that's going to give lasting healing. So it's, when you hear about this first, sometimes you think, oh gosh, it's just this sort of trick or this wand that's going to, you know, block pain for half a day or something like that, which would still be useful, but just understand there's more to it. And so as those healing cascades improve, what you'll see clinically is these patients will come back every couple of days for these treatments and they'll be like, hey, you know what, I was, you know, here on my pain level and now it's here. And the next day it's here. And why is that happening? It's because there's actually this you know, the, the inflammatory process is mellowing out, tissue is actually on the med. All the stuff that's going to give long-term relief is happening, but you also have this powerful tool to help in the short term to bring that down. So um, we could talk about mechanisms on this stuff for an hour. It, it, it's, mm -hmm. it's interesting to geek out on it, but just understand it's it's not a one-trick pony. It, it's doing a handful of different things that are going to help that tissue get better. Right. So Patients commonly ask me, so, you know, is this temporary? Am I going to have to keep doing this forever? And I'll tell them, no, that's the cool thing about these technologies, shockwave and laser, is that it actually has a actual tissue regeneration effect and it's, it's permanent. Now, if you go back and do those aggravating factors and exercises and you sit horribly at your workplace and you keep doing all those bad things to your body, yeah, it's probably going to come back, but once it heals, it, it it heals unless it's um injured yeah. again. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, like for example, shockwave, a patient can come in anywhere from four to eight to twelve times weekly, right? And it's not like chiropractic adjustment where it's like two, three times a week in the beginning. It's it's just weekly. Um, it is that is that powerful that it just needs to be done once a week. Um, and they do that for again, like one, two, three months weekly, and they're good. That that body part is transformed okay? and it's 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 healed, right? So yeah, really, really, really powerful. I, I think, you know, the, the thing to appreciate is the, the research supports for shockwave treatments for a tenon, tendinopathy, a tendinosis. You're probably looking at like three to four sessions at once a week, like John said. So like from a plan of care standpoint to, to fold that in, you're thinking about, hey, I want to introduce for about a month. And, and for laser, it can be a little bit longer and it can be a few more times a week, depending on how acute the problem is. But again, <clears throat> you're get, from just a time standpoint, you know, if they if they're showing up in a late, acute frame or even an early subacute frame, you're talking about, I need a couple of weeks of time to get them into a proliferative phase where they're going to have very little substance P and feeling really good. So again, you're framing, Hey, if you can just, you know, put this into your plan for two to three weeks on the laser front, um, you should be feeling great by the time we get to the end of this. And that's just because the tissue is going to have a chance to move forward. So it will help you with your prognosis and, and help you with framing your plans of care on the on the painful acute side you know it can it can extend obviously on the management side and you know on the, on the longer term and how you're going to help them as they reintroduce into function and what have you but i i think it's important the thing that listening to john talk is that these devices are part of your plan they're not going to be the entire plan so they they fit in with a very well thought out program of eccentrics and you know soft tissue work and manipulation and things of that nature for the for the problem at hand but um it just makes that whole thing easier and move, move forward better. Yeah. So for your chiropractors or physical therapists, you know, if you're treating, say a neck or back issue, you know, spine related, along with adjustments, mobilization, manipulation, adding these shockwave laser to those areas, now you're enhancing and uh, getting fast results, better, faster. So that that's what we found. We found that the total number of adjustments we need over a, a certain few months period of time that has diminished, you know, we we're having, uh, we're able to adjust our patients less total because of these modalities are just getting the patients there faster. Um, but actually in some extremity areas like elbows, shoulders, wrists, knees, feet, ankles, we are seeing that. It, honestly, we've seen standalone by itself, you know, either shockwave by itself or shockwave and laser by itself just to the area. And 
we do nothing else. Maybe we teach some stretches for the area. It, it works, right? So it's, it's still powerful. All right. So then um, it is Q4, right? So we are, um, <laughs> this, this is what I typically do. And this is why I tell my coaching clients is like, hey, this is the, about the time when you start thinking about um, wise investments, right? So because these machines are so powerful, uh, you know, they're, they're not super cheap, right? It, it is an investment, but it's a great way to get that tax deduction for business uh, expense. And, and that's the section 179 tax deduction in the U S. Um, so this is something that you're going to want to talk to your accountant about like, Hey, should, should I do this? Is this wise? Uh, because it's, it's a huge write-off. Is that right? Dr. Mark? Yeah. It's basically, you're taking the depreciation of the value all this year. So, um, you know, they've, they've granted this this uh, special 179 exemption for the last several years, but it could go away, you know. So, but it's it's a really wonderful thing if you say you spend $40,000 on a device um, to be able to write off all the depreciation. So roughly ten dollars to $15,000, depending on your tax bracket this year. So those are real savings that you're not giving to Uncle Sam, um, which is really great. So from that standpoint, you know, it's definitely something to check into if, you, if you've had a great year and your accountant says, hey, man, we got to figure out some, you know, to bring that number down a little bit on, on some CapEx expense. Um, it's a great way to do it. And obviously in Q4, you know, most manufacturers are pretty motivated to move products. So um, interest rates have dropped a little bit recently, which is nice. And, uh, you know, we're definitely motivated at Chattanooga to uh, put the best deal forward. So if you're, if you're interested, um, we'll give you some contact information here shortly so that you can reach out to us. Sure. So um, there are different options out there, obviously, for this kind of technology. But again, Chattanooga, because of how strong the company is and their their history, um, I, I highly recommend them. Uh, majority of my um, modalities uh, through the years have all been through Chattanooga. So I'm going to have my video editor just kind of put up on the screen. Um, for the focus, you guys have the intellect focused machine, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then, so hopefully that's on the screen there, intellect focus. That's the, the, what class three, you said the really powerful one. It's a class three device from the FDA. Yeah. And, the the retail number on that's in the low 40,000 range. So that's okay. uh, generally where that's going to hang out. Okay. And then I'm going to have on the screen, the, um, intellect RPW two, which is a radio pulse. And I think two stands for what second, second version or model. Yeah, there's a mobile RPW, which is the precursor of it, which is a little bit smaller, doesn't have the same software and things on it, uh, or as many features. But the uh, yeah, the RPW is the second generation of that, which is a standalone component tower. Uh, it's got really nice protocols on it. Uh, it's very easy, a uh, couple touches to to adjust, so uh, looks great. Standalone, small footprint, uh, mm -hmm. has the ability for vibrational techniques. Uh, if you get that. Uh, that package that has that in addition to a whole variety of tips that you can purchase if you want to maximize its versatility for depth for superficial conditions versus deeper conditions and roughly price points in the, in the high teens for the rpw2 so you can sort of figure out where your price point is where you'd like to be um and then you can talk to our sales folks to get the specifics on that sure yeah and we got our hands on this one recently yeah it's a beautiful design very user-friendly uh, looks great small footprint and then uh, there's a whole variety of light force lasers, right? So I'll have maybe one or two models shown on the screen here. We have the EXPI, which has been around for a little bit, but 25 watts, ex extremely powerful. Um, but now you guys have even more powerful ones, 40 watts. Yeah, the, the 40 watt XLI uh, has been our flagship for the last four or five years. So it's the most popular device that we sell. We have a 25 watt uh, EXPI, the, 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 the one that John has, it's, an, it's called the XPI now. And uh, they both have our smart hand piece on it. So the, the, the device will tell you and give you haptic feedback. So it'll vibrate if you go too slow or too fast. And there's also an LED on the hand piece that stays green if you're going the right pace or red if it's too slow or yellow if you're too fast. So it literally will make training and your application is very consistent from clinician to clinician. Uh, and if you're, you're, if you're handing those services off to a CA, um, it's going to make it really easy to train them so that they know how fast to move that back and forth. And this has software features that make it very easy to dose. And there's a whole bunch of protocols on there that have been shown to be very, very effective. So um, very simple to use. Uh, and then if you have questions down the road, obviously we can help answer that. So the 15 watt uh, FXI is the last one in the lineup and that has actually a battery in it. So that's battery powered. If you needed to use that, you can run it for you know over an hour uh, if need be. 
Um, but it's just designed to be more mobile and more versatile. But uh, other than that, lots of different treatment heads and things to make it easier. We, we're the, the leader in on-contact treatment, which helps with depth. So, you know, by putting the device, the glass on the on our massage balls uh, directly on the surface of the skin, it helps get light deeper. Um, and we have a patent on that. So um, awesome. It's good and then um, for those of you who want to learn more and possibly get these devices, uh, we're going to put a website link up here. So ChattanoogaRehab.com. Um, so again, look on the screen there. And if you click on the learn more button, you could submit your information and then request more information. And they've got sales reps um, all across the country. So usually you can get someone at your actual practice pretty quickly to, to bring the demo units so you can experience it. And, and uh, they, they'll even be as nice as letting you treat patients for a half a day or a day. So you can really see how it works with your patients and get their honest feedback. So check out that website. And what's the phone number they can also reach out at? If you want to go old school, it's uh, 877-627-3858. So you can awesome. call the number and they can also get you set up too. Cool. All right, folks. So whether you're a healthcare provider, chiropractor, physical therapist, or medical doctor, or you're just a um, everyday person out there wanting to learn more about this, uh, these two topics, I hope this was insightful. Dr. Mark, thank you so much for your expertise. We're definitely looking forward to uh, our upcoming seminar in February where you're going to teach more about this to our, our um, clients live, face-to-face. -face. Um, so, yeah. And thank, we're going to have lots so of much. equipment there to treat each other, too. So we'll be able to That's right. Yeah, we're, we're going to have um, several stations of these units to, to really get your hands on and, and see how they work, see how they feel. So uh, check out. We're, we'll leave a link to our seminar information page um, in the description as well. But Dr. Mark, thank you so much. We really appreciate um, your expertise, insights, take the time and uh, really appreciate it. Yeah, Dr. John. Thanks. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. Next episode. Thank you.